What's up, everybody? Welcome to uh, the impartial Rasta, I guess, because uh, we be jamon. I appreciate what dedicated sewners everybody is. The last video that I did on this Rasta church uh, got all the way up to 420 views, and then everybody just stopped watching it. Good job, guys. I just appreciate those people that are like about to watch the video and they see that number down there. They're like, wait, no gotta keep the 420 going don't watch this video so i'm doing this video today about the rasta church here in madison and what might become the supreme court case here to make marijuana a first amendment right so yeah jesse schwark ross jesse the dude in that started the rasta church here in madison and then the city shut it down it was raided by police uh yeah and then he went to court was talking about he needs some Rastafari translator or something. Anyway, Jesse Schwark and his partner Dylan Banger were released on signature bond under the uh, condition that they don't go to the church and continue to sell marijuana or cannabis. They open the church back up, but they are no, not uh, exchanging donations for the sacrament of the cannabis. But there have also been other things done by the city. They've uh, written them up for some code violations and also questioned or brought up the concern uh, about the zoning, though acknowledging that it could be zoned or that could be a use for the site, but that it's just not currently zoned for a church. So in a way it does seem kind of like the city making a further attempt to undermine the operation so that uh, It'll appear that way in the court case. The story is now, he's got a court date August 9th, he's got a lawyer and they're making the case that the charges against the church are unconstitutional. Yeah, we have another court date coming up in uh, a couple weeks, maybe uh, early August. So, you know, we've been dealing with this thing in our own way. I hope people have been watching and seeing some of the way that things have transpired because our position is that uh, this they don't have jurisdiction to bring this case against us. There's a, there's a separation of church and state, like we've been saying all along. And so we're exercising our lawful right to have a, a church and a free exercise. And the, the statutes that they wrote uh, apply to people who use drugs and sell drugs and deal in a drug way. And none of the statutes that they wrote uh, have any intent to their application to be against churches and people that use um, a sacrament or, or cannabis or any other type of a thing that they might consider an illegal plant. Uh, there's no intent to stop churches from doing that in a lawful context. And you'll find that if you look at uh, what the legislator intended when they wrote those statutes. So basically right now though, as it, those charges that were, or the, the charges that have been made, those are still yep, on so the table from the uh, DA? Yep, so we still have uh, these charges of the or false charges rather and uh, we also have our federal lawsuit that's also pending at the same time so i believe within the next two to three maybe four weeks uh, we'll have some conclusions happening in, in both of those uh, we've currently we beat our eviction case our, our young lady decided she doesn't want to evict us and then uh, we've also overcome the hurdle that they were placing uh, threatening us we come back into the church, so now we're back in the church, and we just want to use this time to get some of our programs running, like uh, our food program for people, and our clothing, and our other services that help people get jobs, and uh, within a couple weeks, hopefully, we'll resolve this whole issue uh, by, you know, proper articulation in the court. Yeah, so what Raj Jesse is saying here is that this is about the separation of church and state, which is, you know, a pretty big part of the history of this country. And so he's going to try to advance that argument, bringing this forward. Uh, you know, this has been an issue that's been the foundation of our country, you know, separation of church and state. And so this is something that is not, a, is not some new issue, or this is not some uh, amazing issue that people should be wondering, oh, when, when did this argument come, or oh, this is this got to be some loophole. This isn't a loophole. This is this is your life. This is the, this is the America. This is what the country was founded on. If you don't if you don't Freedom like it, speech, uh, I mean, too bad. This is, this is this is the things that we have here for our rights. So, you know, these aren't loopholes. This is just us living. You know, we're we're American people. We don't harm people. 
we just uh, wish to like treat our neighbors good the same way we wish to be treated. Is there any like specific precedent or case you're going to try to refer to or point to, or is it just kind of the freedom of religion argument as a whole more? Yeah, that's a good point. So there is uh, some cases, there's a particular case that many people might not be familiar with. Uh, I already went to the Supreme Court uh, a few years ago uh, with uh, another Schedule One substance called DMT and uh, some different, another religious group. Uh, that DMT is found in another plant. Like, uh, it's called ayahuasca. It's a different plant. So they already went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court already ruled that any Schedule One substance can be used for religious uh, purposes. Any Schedule One plant can be used by a church. Uh, so it's a matter of you have to be sincere. And you just can't be out here trying to make a cannabis church and play people. And trying to uh, just try to do something so you can get money with no good intention behind it. Like, we have. Uh, we have brothers and sisters here who are real people that are interested in making positive growth and uh, reforming things in our community that bring about social justice for people and, and give people their rights and help them. So we're not here just trying to set up a dispensary or play with people and uh, like the way the government wants to do when they want to introduce legalization for medical and recreational reasons so that they can capitalize and limit you on what you can do, and, and you can do this, and you can't do that. But if you have enough money, then you can do it. And if you if you own this business, and if you if you uh, if you're connected to this guy, and if you paid this fine, and if you did all these other hoops, uh, then they want to tell you that then you have a limit that you can do according to them. Okay, now this is something I thought was interesting. Is like so he's not even about legalization, and they're about this freedom of religion thing. Uh, it would just make it, you know, your God-given right to ha possess, grow, smoke marijuana, do what you want with it. So we're not about any of those things. We don't support legalization of recreational cannabis. We don't support legalization of medical cannabis. We support uh, our innate, original right that you have to use any plant for religious use. That comes from our constitution. It's an unalienable right, and we don't need to deal with other people trying to benefit off of making something illegal or, or partly legal so that some aristocrat can, uh, or some bureaucracy or some big rich company people can uh, make Domestic money off it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what they're doing right now. Domestic well, yeah. yeah, no, and I've, I guess I've seen maybe a post or something and seen you <laughs> explain this, but it, to me it seems like the reaction in the cannabis advocate community has been pretty divided because it's like, yeah, you have this group of people who've been pushing for the legislation, mm -hmm. the legalization, and wow. then you're kind of coming along and saying, wait, the waste of time, a big waste of time. But I mean, the freedom of religion argument would basically override that. I yeah, mean. it's a better so it's and like, bigger argument, it's the only argument. And the rest of the stuff that they're doing <coughs> is just a means of them uh, using a lesser control, just to control you, it's still, they'll still be controlling you, you can only have so much, or you can only do this, or you can only do that, or have this one, or that one, and it has to be this percentage, or it has to come from this store that got approved by this agency, and all this, and all this nonsense, you know? So, all that stuff is a headache, and that's not what we're about. All that stuff is just trouble for people. We want people to know that you have a right, right now, just to exercise your religious right, and you don't need to go through all that crap, you don't need to protest for 40 years with normal so that you can put your opinion on a piece of paper and they, you can say, oh, I want, I want cannabis to be legal. And then they can say, oh, 80% of you want it to be legal. And then you can just say, they just say to you, oh, good for your opinion. Uh, nice for all, thanks for your opinion, great. They don't have to do nothing about it. So all the protesting and everything leads to people getting to voice their opinions, but it doesn't, it doesn't make any progress. Here we are, we have progress, and we're not going away. Wanting to go with the freedom of religion argument has kind of caused a divide. Um, also, just the Rastafari church has caused a divide in like the cannabis community in uh, Madison and I guess around the state. And there's been kind of a little bit of a rift from the Facebook pages that I pay attention to. But there was this one particular incident when they were raided, the director of Normal, uh, the Madison chapter posted uh, like a selfie with the plate and with one of the cops during the raid. Ross Jesse has this to say about Alan Robinson. Alan knows he doesn't have any respect in, in the community in terms of uh, honesty. Uh, everybody knows he's a dishonest person. And uh, the fact that Alan was over here celebrating our, our demise, taking pictures with police, will tell you what type of person Alan is. So, I mean, the guys that they have working for them, 
uh, it's, it's a shame, you know, people that are just into things for personal reasons and publicity and money and shady business deals, you know, it is what it is. But apparently Alan Robinson, I saw a live stream from him the other day where he was sitting down to meet with them and apparently they had a conversation. We don't really know what came of that, but I guess we can assume they're at least willing to talk to each other. So the other thing that has been all wrapped up in this story is some of the personal beliefs that uh, Ross Jesse, Jesse Schwark has been sharing uh, regarding straight pride, uh, some kind of like anti-feminist comments and transphobia. So yeah, I asked him about that stuff and I mean, this is what he had to say. These things are, we, we acknowledge that there's people that are born with <coughs> um, extra chromosomes, they're born with uh, both both parts. You can have, uh, for lack of a better word, hermaphrodites or asexual. And uh, other people that are, are born in a certain way as a third gender. And that's a very small percentage of people. But there's a lot of people who are aspiring to be that 1% and or they're, they're even confused and they want to mutilate their bodies and and, uh, and instead they want to chop off their private parts and go on Vogue magazine and talk about how sweet it is and those things are ideas that we can't support we support treating everybody with human rights and we support uh, treating everybody according to the way they treat us uh, you know in terms of like good character and, and being uh, decent human beings but we're not going to agree that uh, the choice that people make to uh, use their use their sexual energy in a way that's not productive and, and oftentimes like uh, vulgar and dirty and and, uh, and it's been spoken about all throughout time and all generations across every religion on how certain ways of life don't promote life and so we're not about those ways we learned our lessons and we're trying to be about life and growth and uh, making families stay together instead of this increased divorce rate. So we're all for trying to heal people of, of a deficient mind, body, and spirit. Yeah, but I mean, I guess like it, it seems like you can be supportive of you know families and like uh, I guess more traditional gender roles concepts, but also be welcoming to the people in the LGBT community. Yeah, enough uh, LGBT people come in here, they're treated with the same respect as everybody else. Uh, you know, they've often said many times that this is the one place that they feel safe and unjudged. And it's because we're not just gonna sit here and then, uh, and like condemn people all day in here and tell you that your life is wrong and our life is right. That's not what this is about. It's about people trying to come in here and have fellowship together. And we all have problems in life that we need to resolve together. So we don't have all the answers, but we got some answers and other people have answers. But what's important is that uh, we don't just uh, treat people disrespectfully just because they come in here with a certain uh, belief about sex. You know, that doesn't make any sense. Like, you know, sex is not the issue here. We're not, we don't even talk about sex at the church. Like, we don't even have, like, sex is not part of our program. Like, we come in here to talk about other things. So if people are in here, uh, trying to promote sex and sexual energy and sexual ideas that's just, it's not the place uh, to promote those things but we can have conversations about building families and reproducing offspring and how, how beneficial that is to society and how how uh, it's like the, the fulfillment of two opposites attracting and creating life I don't think everyone's gonna get behind those views personally and, you know, I asked them about that. I'm like, you know, people who, like I've talked to people personally that have thought this was a cool idea, like wanted to see this church fight the power or whatever. But then like, we're like, wait a second, I don't know about this stuff. <laughs> and the, the like straight pride thing. And uh, yeah, so I asked him about that. Like, what do you think about people just not wanting to support it because of these other ideas that he's talking about? So this is what he said. Those, uh, those issues, I think, there's always going to be unhappy people. There's always going to be people that look, look to have a problem. But uh, most of those people that, that feel that way haven't actually been here. And they haven't actually uh, themselves stepped in here to like, have any reasonable communication with us or any interaction. So once you come here, to know us is to love us. You know? we, don't have, we don't have problems with people. So 
I expect there's always going to be problems, but hopefully uh, through, through dialogue and through uh, fellowship and communication, people will open up and they'll resolve those problems with us. Well, yeah, so like this dude or not, this is probably the guy that's going to be fighting this court case. Um, but I did talk to his lawyer. So yeah, Jesse Schwark and his partner, Dylan Banger, are awaiting trial now. They are getting charged with maintaining drug trafficking place and possession with intent to deliver marijuana. And so, yeah, in his first court appearance, in his first hearing, he tried to argue that he couldn't. Uh, he needed a Rastafari translator. Uh, that pissed the judge off, and I don't know, he seemed to pretty much drop that, and he did get a lawyer. Yep, so uh, we've been representing ourselves, challenging the jurisdiction, and uh, because we know we have rights as a, as a man or a woman in this country. So um, what it is is that we, we are not under the jurisdiction of this statute. There's a separation of church and state. So the way things are is that the way these legal codes and these statutes were written is to uh, apply to people that use things in a, in a legal way for drugs and they, they wanted to stop people from uh, doing drug activity and drug uh, things that are involved with drugs and so none of the things that apply to churches um, apply to those statutes like uh, it's, it's a completely different thing for someone to use drugs than it is for someone to use um, herbs in a, as a sacrament in a religious setting. So the intent that they had behind the statutes when they statutes when they created them was to stop drug people and drug drug communities. But it had no bearing and no mention of uh, of churches. So the point being is that the legislative intent behind the statutes when they were created did, does not and did not apply to churches. So we're not. Those statutes don't apply to us. There's a separation of church and state, and uh, so that's that's kind of how things are. You know, we have uh, we have court coming up. Uh, we do have some attorneys that are helping us right now. Uh, Dylan has uh, Jesse Beeson. She's uh, the daughter of uh, I think it's Charlie Beeson, who's uh, maybe the top attorney in the state or or one of them, and uh, she's helping on his case and. I've got another uh, guy named Anthony DeLea, who's a great lawyer, uh, very well spoken of. <coughs> He's helping us. And uh, we've got another uh, another brother reached out to us from Harvard Law School. We've got a Harvard Law professor also uh, reaching out to help us that's involved. So uh, things are moving forward and we expect in a short time we'll be going back to court to resolve any further issues with the cannabis. Uh, attorney Jessica Geeson will be representing Banger and attorney Anthony Delier will be representing Schwark. And so I had a chance to talk to Anthony Delier. He did not want to go do a recorded interview, but he did give me a little bit of background on what his argument was. And he said that it was a little different than what Jesse was saying. So that was kind of interesting. And he was like, well, that's why he needs a lawyer. So, yeah. so Jesse said something kind of different, but this is basically what the lawyer said was that uh, he's going to refer to that Supreme Court case where marijuana, well, in that case, ayahuasca was for religious use, but in this case, marijuana would be for religious use. And then there's something in there about uh, the government not having a compelling reason to do this. And so what he's pointing to in that case, or what he's planning to point to here on August 9th, is that because the city decriminalized marijuana, and made it basically uh, a $1 fine that there was no, that they have no compelling argument to shut down this church. He said he believes this will go to the Supreme Court. Um, he also said he thinks if it's not uh, Jesse Schwark, it, it could be someone else um, and be using the same argument. Another interesting thing is apparently when they make this uh, motion for dismissal on the grounds of it being unconstitutional on August 9th is that it will go to the Attorney General of the state and the Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers and so apparently at that point according to Delier the Governor or the Attorney General could basically say we're not going to pursue this we're not going to go take this forward uh, 
because yeah, apparently whenever something's, whenever there's a motion for something being, un or claim that something's unconstitutional, it does have to go to the state's attorney general. So that'll be interesting to see whether the governor or attorney general do anything at that point. All right, this has been Cameron Brown from Partial Theorists. Peace.